Hey, welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast number. I, I'm skipping 13 this week. It'll yeah. be 14. Yeah. 14 slash 15. <laughs> I'm Greg 50. Valoria, aka Social Greg, and you are. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. How you doing, Greg? <laughs> great week, a little stuffed. <laughs> yeah, man. I know, really, huh? It sounds like we both had uh, great, great, great meals and, and times for this whole Thanksgiving, post Thanksgiving show here. Oh, yeah. I think uh, we're ready for this show after we've been uh, gorging all week. So I think we're ready to burn some uh, tech calories here. Yes, yes. And hopefully by the time we're done, my Steelers will have won handily. So, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> the American yeah. football game for all you global citizens. <laughs> well, I just saw the, the tweet came over you know, around Thanksgiving that the authorities seized 131 domains associated with the piracy and counterfeiting. What a perfect time to like <laughs> right. put this story out too, right? Right before like the holiday, like let's quietly seize all these domains. You know what I mean? Well, but uh, I well, mean, he tweeted it out, and there was a lot of people that were really upset about this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, let's see. I. I, I when I dug into the article, it was from Venture Beat. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tom, Tom. Yeah, yeah, and he's pretty good. And yeah. um, you know, they reported that the U.S. government has seized 131 domains yeah. allegedly associated with counterfeiting and piracy-related websites. Reports torrent the freak. So, right, right, right. So this um, is like a joint like thing with like Department of Justice and ICE. Right. That's right. <laughs> I love that That's name. Nice. I forget they have some weird name for the operation too. It's like Operation Douchebag or something like that. But anyways, uh, well, Operation <laughs> in our sights. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. What is it? So he's saying the domain seizure strategy is similar to a to what both the Protect IP and the S the. SOPA pieces of legislation tend to do. Uh, a lot of people have been criticizing that this is the uh, government overstepping its boundaries, authority again, and infringing on civil liberties. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, it, it's a black. It seems like it's a Black Friday tradition now. <laughs> geez. You know. Yeah, we keep we keep giving this up and up, right? Well, they, they did eighty two last year. I read, mm. and then um, you know this whole. Uh, you know, operation in our sights yeah. thing was created uh, like last year uh, in around June, July, you know, towards the end of June. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I thought it was kind of interesting. That's a combination of, you know, ICE and, yeah. and um, you know, Delvar and Justice. I, I wasn't quite sure how that, you know, you, you would think the FCC might have a hand in this, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you well, the, the real scary thing, I think, for us, like just regular old citizens and people who use the web, mm. is that sites that simply mm. share links to potentially illegal streaming content as well as torrent search sites just linking were among those that had domains seized by the government and uh, of course neither the DOJ or ICE um, Department of Justice or ICE have made uh, any official s uh, statement yet about this uh, about any of this uh, it's it's really it's it's a shame that in this country you know in the United States that that we're pulling this yeah. kind of you know this kind of crap but <sighs> You know, uh, and, and I think what, what really bothers us, right, uh, you and I, is just we, we don't know the criteria, right? Mm -hmm. it, it seems like it's it's totally <laughs> subjective. Mm -hmm. So like like you said earlier, if you're just maybe even sniffing the site and happen to retweet it or whatever, yeah, man. you know, yeah. you know, your site could go down as well. Yeah. You know? So um, yeah, this is I, I don't know. This is lame. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, big nets. And, not not cool. Oh, yeah, and then with this this SOPA legislation, uh, you know, the, they were talking about that for the last few weeks. Yeah, but, really bad you stuff. Know, I don't know what that's going to turn into. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think is, I think that legislation is going to die. I think I heard a uh, both on both sides of the house that they're saying they're going to just bury this SOPA, but we'll see about them. this. Is awful that this is actually happening. These domain seizures, you know, and this. Hopefully, this will cease and and the public will. <laughs> You know, say, hey, this is this isn't right. You know, I understand if you're if these sites are you know re relinking you to some some site that's you know offering iPhone 4s and they're actually selling you yeah. some flip phone or something like that, right? Or not yeah, even right, right, right. right but uh, right. that's not the case here. So yeah, and you know, it 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 still boils up the debate, which I think the SOPA debate also brought up is you know, are they going to create a different um, <laughs> you know, government agency to manage all this? Is it FCC? Uh, Is it, you know, I mean, mm. it, you know, the, the list goes on and on, right? You My know take I mean? is less you is know. more, less is more, hands off, like, you know, I don't know. 
Yeah, 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 I agree with you on that one. Wow. So, so why don't I lead you into the next story after talking about that sobering thing um, uh, of actually protecting uh, websites. What, what's this uh, tweet I saw from you this week about the worst uh, passwords of 2011? I thought it was pretty right. funny, actually. So I have to thank uh, Corey Doctorow yet again of Boing Boing for this uh you know, making us aware of this story. Splash Data, a company that makes uh, password management tools, has released a roundup of allegedly 2011's 25 worst passwords uh, gleaned from uh, password dumps posted by hackers. So mainly, I think this mm -hmm. comes from a lot of the passwords that were sort of released during the Anonymous's, or I believe it was take on Sony's uh, PlayStation Network passwords. Um, no, so I, right. <laughs> I think someone went in and, and sort of gathered sort of the stats on that. And uh, some of these are really uh, hilarious. The number one, you know, password, of course, is password itself. So all you people with the password password, change it. Uh, number you, you two. Not, not one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, six. Yeah, that was number two. No, that one was actually a good one. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, number three is one through eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number four is actually okay, QWERTY, okay. which is really weird. Uh, number five makes sense. I've heard people use this one before, ABC123. Uh, but there are some really weird ones. Number six was Monkey. Um, number 10 was Dragon. Uh, 11 was Baseball. Who would use Dragon? Yeah, yeah. Or uh, number 17 was Bailey. So maybe that's a common name in the Sony PlayStation Network or something. Um, oh, definitely in the drinking network. <laughs> yeah. Number 22 was Superman. Uh, number okay, 25 yeah. was Football. And um, this is another good one that people always use. Number 18 was password with the O being the number zero, you know what I mean, in password. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but you know, um, uh, Corey had a really good point at the end of it, and I, I tend to agree, is that uh, mm -hmm. it seems like the lifespan for, for passwords is, is really fading now and the usefulness of passwords themselves, you know, um, yeah. that, that – you know, of course, that brings people to say, well, then what's next? I don't know. But there's got to be something else better than this kind of, you know, archaic sort of, it seems like outdated. I mean, we're, it seems to be like we're growing out of this notions of passwords, multiple passwords for all these things, you know, there's got to well, be a better uh, way. Yeah. Well, I think open ID and, and some of, you know, ways of linking back to an original password seems to help. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I can't keep track of my passwords. I, yeah. I have to have a spreadsheet or one of those apps that right. <laughs> allows you to track right. all your, your, your passwords. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah, I just can't, um, you know, I can't fathom, you know, and then they have the, I think, you know, multiple clicks is getting a little bit old for most people, like, you know, using the captchas to make sure you're a human. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? I know. Oh, you know? that drives me crazy. I, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, because I can't read half of them, so yeah. I go, like, three, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, this is the third time go I'm going to enter this right. captcha. <laughs> and then at the flip side, there's, like, Facebook authentication, right? But the problem is if Facebook mm -hmm. goes down, then you can't get into any of these sites. So I know that's been a problem yeah. for some people in the past. Yeah, uh, you know, so, you know, open ID maybe s simplifies this ID thing, but you're right, you know, maybe maybe with, with the phones and eventually with these front-facing cameras, you know, face rec is probably where you go or now, you mm -hmm. know, something like that, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. You know that, hey, that man, you posted a really cool story. It was a uh, hotel owners blackmailed with bad trip advisor reviews for not offering freebies. Oh yeah, um, you know, one of the people I follow, uh, who's a writer on the, um, uh, the Next Web, um, Crystal uh, Teal, um, Lady Extel on on Twitter. I I catch some th things of hers once in a while, and I, I this one I just couldn't pass up. Hotel owners blackmailed with <laughs> bad uh, trek trip advisor reviews and not offering freebies. I, I mean, so basically, um, some of the reporter requests. So basically, there's some people who are saying, hey, uh, I'm going to give you one star. I'm going to give you one star on your oh, hotel. Oh, wow. And then you give me a discount. You know, otherwise you give otherwise, me a Otherwise, so, yeah, uh, threats, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so and, and it, it boils down to this thing where um, basically they, they've been saying, uh, give me a 50% discount, and hmm. I'll, I'll, I will make sure that you will not get a one-star review on, on your on your wow. trip advisor. Now, now, here, you know, this is the problem, right, is that – you know, how do you authenticate mm. some of these things? Because mm -hmm. there's the flip side. Maybe hotel employees are putting five-star ratings mm. on their hotels, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you could log in as anyone as long as you have a, a, a Gmail address right. or something like that, right? right. And, and, and 
I hear the same thing from Yelp, right? Yelp for years went through that. You know, how right. do you authenticate you know, Yelp reviews? And, and most of these people, I, I think it's just too big for these guys to manage anyway. Hmm. You know, they can't authentic, authenticize it, and they can't yeah. figure out um, how to. So they're just saying, well, you know, the, the, we're just we just let it go, and you know, mm-hmm. we we let it up to the, you know, Yelp kind of does it kind of neat. You could reply to your Yelp mm-hmm. negatives, right? And right. You could right, say, right. hey, you know, I gave this dude a, you know, you know, you could explain your side of the story, and then let let the readers kind of make their own decision, right? Yeah. Um, well, another company, there's Angie's yeah. Angie's List also, right? So you pay for oh, right, a subscription right, right, to them, right. and they supposedly give you these like professional type of reviews of all these. Well, of a bunch of different places or whatever, but that that's not free. Obviously, you have to pay for that. Right. Um, I think they just IPO'd or something like that or about to. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I and um, you know, there's there's a bunch of good sites, but I think what that's the, funny, the, though. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the, less, the lesson really is is that you just can't trust one source. I yeah, think yeah. That is the real lesson. Is. I mean, if you're trusting, like, one source, even how – well, Wikipedia or TripAdvisor is or whatever, right, right. it's really good to double check some things, you know, if you really are serious about doing something. Um, but, you know, in this fast, you know, fast paced life we're in, you know, sometimes we say, OK, one's enough and we're, we, you know, we go on to the next thing. So, yeah, it's tough, hmm. tough. So, uh, you know, I think the latest things I've been seeing is HTML5, HTML5 all over the place, especially yeah. after Flash. Uh, Flash uh, aided on mobile, but yeah. uh, what's Silverlight this uh, tweet also. I saw from you uh, from AppMobi and open sourcing their mobile HTML technology? Yeah, so this is via Giga. Um, he's um, AppMobi has announced that they on Thanksgiving, uh, Black Friday actually, had uh, open sourced a lot of their a lot of their work for mobile, which is incredible. They say, uh, "quote We think it's unacceptable for any one company to have control over what everybody everybody else can say or do on mobile devices." So um, what they've done is they've open sourced all kinds of like what used to be their proprietary technology that they would charge, you know, uh, money mm. for, I believe, a lot of this mm. stuff. And a lot of it's really good. So what essentially this does is give uh, a leg up to the developer who wants to create sort of mobile solutions in, in HTML5, as HTML, in an HTML5 kind of way um, to have all these resources already built for them to build off of. Um, so some of the things that they've open sourced is um, their JavaScript bridge API. Uh, they have their own nice. browser, mobile browser, called uh, MobiUs, um, which is a, a, big, a big deal also. And mm. uh, they also have an HTML5 game acceleration, direct canvas box 2D and sound, uh, which has been oh, open sourced. Wow. And uh, another one also is a mobile optimized UI framework open source. So it's sort of a UX solution for mobile also. Mm. So a very well-rounded nice. um, um, amount of tools that they're offering for the developer all open source, so you can go in there, you know, tweak it. It's really great for enterprises as well, because oftentimes mm-hmm. there's a requirement for the enterprise developer to have access to all, all of the code, right, to be able to yes, customize exactly. it and tweak it and so they know that, the, you know, there's no patent issues and, and they can do what yeah. they need to do with it also. So this is a really big deal. Also, the web, the web browser, their own proprietary mobile web browser, is a big deal being open sourced also because mm-hmm. you know that... Um, there are other tools, you know, integrate really well with it, and they're talking about performance gains here. It's like a huge uh, percentage performance gains for 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 some of these uh, solutions. Like one of them, I can't remember which one, is like fifteen hundred percent increase. So they're talking about like a native app type of experience with this HTML five wow. kind of stuff that they're offering. Wow. So um, it's definitely worthwhile, worth checking into for you developers to you know look into this and and hats off to AppMobi for this, you know. No, no, it's great. So, so how how are they going to make money? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. The open source. Or so they... <laughs> what what I've seen, uh, you know, they do have other products still. You know, they have an open source mm-hmm. to everything, so they have other products. Yeah. It, who knows? They might take the Hadoop sort of route too, where they're offering services. You know, in Hypertable type of realm, they're offering services for this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's you know that's a good question. We'll see. You know, I I you know no one seems to do this by the the fondness of their you know their heart, but I think uh, there's really? a lot more of these uh, <laughs> type of companies that are, and I think larger companies that are going to start offering this type of stuff you know uh in yeah. an open source fr- you know quote unquote free kind of way and, and who knows maybe this is this is at moby's early sort of strike to get in you know early while they can 
Well, you know, I was looking at the numbers from the article you sent me, and it was like, wow, they have about 27,000 developers and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. 40,000 projects under development. I mean, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're no small cat. Yeah, yeah. You There's know, a lot of really interest in this. Surprised. Yeah, it's a, it's a wow. big deal. Very cool. Wow. Okay. Whoa. We'll so how about you, man? Uh, speaking of HTML5, you're talking about uh, HTML5 killing mobile apps? Oh, geez. Well, you know, I, I thought it was a good commentary. Um, uh, Rafe uh, Needleman from uh, CNET News um, right before Thanksgiving um, said, um, you know, this could be bad. You know, basically, HTML5 could be bad for news for Apple's lucrative app uh, store business. Uh, while Apple takes a – of all app sales through the, its store, uh -huh. it's still the only way for consumers to get apps – Apple gets zero percent uh, of web apps loaded up through the browser. So the oh, wow. better HTML5 gets, that one side of the story goes, the less developers would write apps and less money Apple would make, and hmm. the less unique the iPhone and iPad become. Hmm. Um, you know, but uh, but I think you know I think for monetization, the developers still have to go through an app store. So I think the challenge for the app developers um, is getting their apps seen by more. Yeah. In a fleeting moment, you know, right, the, right. Uh, you know, we, we promote a, you know, at Btrax, we promote a lot of uh, apps for for customers and clients, uh, you know, marketing, PR wise. But you know, even if you get your app in TechCrunch, yeah. it's a one of those long tail things. Right, right. You know, the, the hockey you know, stick, yeah. You'll, yeah, the hockey stick thing. You'll you'll get notice for maybe two days, and then you'll see the drop off rate tremendously of people talking about it. So. The the question is like Apple does it. How do you keep this uh, flow right. conversation going right, right through right. through months, uh, you know, if not years, yeah. right? So incredibly so, difficult. Yeah. You know, I thought I thought it was a good piece, kind of just saying, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, how, how is Apple? You know, a Apple killed Flash finally, and you know they got what they wanted, but. Yeah. Are they really going to get what they want? You know, yeah. I just thought it was some you know food for thought. I don't think app app stores going anywhere yeah. anytime no, soon. No, that's and, a great point. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, but yeah, HTML5 does does move the landscape a little bit. Um, you know, we'll have to see how yeah. apps go and and all that because, like you said earlier, you know, the performance gains with HTML5 are, are tremendous. That. You know, do you really need native apps anymore? Right, right. I, I think you do. But yeah, you yeah, know, we're still, there. It's still you getting know. there. Is the thing? It's not quite there yet. You know, for some apps, mm -hmm. obviously, a native app is is makes complete sense. I think for some other mm -hmm. ones, I you know, I think HTML5 is a very viable you know, type of uh, solution. Let's say you you have a content application kind of thing, or or your mm -hmm. website, you just want Appify or something like that that just happens to be yeah. content heavy, or or something to that right. effect. You know. I mean, you know, a, a one-off piece, a conference, UI. you know, yeah, or something like yeah, that yeah, that has yeah, a short yeah. lifespan. I, I don't think a yeah. native app is necessarily, you know, uh, you get a lot yeah. of bang for your buck there. So, well, uh, you know, what else uh, would really upset me is uh, hmm. having to go through an airport scanner and having my Kindles be messed up in any kind of way. Oh, you saw that tweet from. <laughs> so, me. what are you talking oh, about, geez, man? Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, uh, what a you number about, of users. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A uh, number of. Um, users have, and, and you know, this is the big travel weekend, right? Mm -hmm. So a number of users have reported that their Kindles have been, you know, damaged a after they went through a scanner. And so, you know, everyone starts saying the x-rays, well, no, it isn't the x-rays. Really what it is, and, you know, I'm a hardware guy, so mm -hmm. it's static electricity, it turns out. And in these scanners with these belts going back and forth, these rubber belts, uh, a static charge could get built up, and it, it really is a problem for any device. You know, some devices, maybe like the Kindle, are more sensitive to static electricity than others. But um, you know, every every everybody has this problem. You know, it isn't just the Kindle. You know, I mean, so basically, you know, when you go out of uh, you're waiting in that long line, you know, you're mm -hmm. getting ready to queue up into the line there, you know, you have to take off your shoes in some cases, not anymore, but I mean, and you take out your laptop from uh -huh. the, and put it down on the little plate there, right? Yeah. And, and that's what they were saying is, is potential for, for static electricity. I, oh, you wow. Know, um, yeah, so um, I think any device has that problem. I, I worked on static electricity on a couple of devices for a mm -hmm. long time, a couple of problems, and it, it's tricky. I, mm -hmm. I mean, 
in some cases, you can't get rid of it unless wow. you add another device that showers ions to get rid of the, to dissipate the static electricity hmm. inside the device, like like the scanner and stuff like that. But wow. anyway, yeah, I thought that Mythbusters, was cool, we need you. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. please help us. Uh, so, oh man. So you know, a follow up to that was you tweeted out something about. Um, Amazon taking over the Android app distribution. Yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. This is this is my favorite article of the week, and this was by uh, Marco okay. Arment. I think he's Marco dot com. Mm. Um, what he's saying essentially is like you know everyone's hearing about the Amazon Fire. It's going to sell, I'm sure, like hotcakes. Two hundred dollar thing on the very front page of Amazon dot com, right? But the thing is, yeah. is like you got to remember uh, this: the Fire itself does not have the Amazon App Store. It has the I mean, um, excuse me, the uh, Google Android App Store or whatever, right? right it has the right. Amazon's Android App Store on it. That's right. right? It's all right. it's all Amazon only, and there's no way to get you know the Google Store on there unless you hack it or you know some side loads and do some weird stuff, which the normal consumer isn't going to do, right? So on mm-hmm. volume, you suddenly have this probably the highest selling tablet probably, uh, and it's all Amazon, but it's Android. So it's really funny. It's kind of like a. a um, the Android market being hijacked in a sense, right? Um, And this is really interesting for developers. Quote, dealing with Amazon is actually much worse for developers than dealing with Apple. By putting your app in the Amazon App Store, you're giving up a lot more control than Apple asks of us. You're giving up the ability to set your own price and control your app's description, um, among many other restrictions. By comparison, it makes Apple look almost open. (laughs) <laughs> unquote is what he says <laughs> it's just funny you know i mean think about what wow. publishers have went through with like pricing their books you know they're super upset because yeah. android i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> these the a's that are amazon. mixing me up here amazon right. they, right. they lowball they fix these prices right so if you're mm-hmm. a developer mm-hmm. and you want your let's say your app to be 10 bucks and amazon says no all apps on this genre are five dollars and that's the way it goes what are you gonna do right yeah, that's right Wow, that's that's fascinating. You're right. They they actually fix the cost of of any any content that's on the, on their web. So mm-hmm. you know, and they discount it appropriately too. You know, and they might, you know, it's up to them whether they discount it or not. And yeah, that 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 they bring up some good points. I yeah. mean, from Amazon's standpoint, that's it's um, a huge user base now that's going to be getting this thing. Yeah. So I mean, developers yeah. really have to pay attention to it. You know, if you, if you not if you don't, then your your app is going to be essentially invisible, right, to a lot of people. Um, another thing yeah. he says: How long will it be before this effect spreads to much uh, larger Android phone market? Is a whole other question, right? We're just talking tablet here. All it will take is a deal between Amazon and one of the big handset manufacturers to preload the Amazon App Store placed more predominantly than Google's Android market on all of their phones for a little while. Uh, Amazon knows how to play the retail game, right? It's their business, and they're incredibly good at it. And at this point, like, um, as gatekeepers go, they make uh, Amazon look almost, I mean, Apple look almost benevolent, right? So (laughs) so the question is, you know, uh, will will this move drive developers back into the arms of Apple, right? Or are you going to have to play both of these camps now? Well, or three. The, I mean, this is insane. How know, fraction, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, well, you know, we can't forget about the Nook either, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think the problem is with tablets, content is really the 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 thing you need, right? You yeah. need content, right? Right, right. right. And uh, which is books, <laughs> you know, other mm-hmm. uh, yeah. other things, you yeah. know. You get video streamed, okay, that's fine. But, mm-hmm. you know, with Barnes & Noble and Amazon, they have books. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and that's something you can't get through the Google, you know, the Android store, right? So, right, 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 uh, right. As easily. I mean, you get the you get the Amazon app, <laughs> right, right. which then he gets you in there. But you can't, you know, you can't do anything else much so I, I think that's the battle that probably is going to be interesting between google and amazon is how you know you know how are they going to acquire their content you know i mean amazon has it already but i mean how is google going to kind of come back with their own content and yeah and how to how to massage that you know right, is right. there you know is there a number three out there that they could you know potentially um, work with um you know and get some get at least a little bit of content yeah we'll see how that goes that'll yeah, be we, interesting uh, yeah great yeah. article well, so tip time <laughs> tip time yeah let's do the tips man let's greg tips. what is your uh tip of the week my friend we'll go oh, you first uh, oh thank you sir no um uh 
there there's this there's this thing I've been getting through email. It's called App Sumo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sumo. Um, basically, it's the daily it's the it's the daily deals for us geeks. So cool. basically, they have um, like daily deals for like HTML classes, video classes, other things like that. Oh, um, I know. Other things that geeks would you know geeks like us would would love. And I, I thought that was kind of a neat. Uh, a neat concept you know it's kind of a takeoff on groupon a little bit you know you get this daily deal in your email box that mm-hmm. says hey you know get 50 percent off uh, html5 class you know video awesome. class you know and and you know I, and i think for a lot of people it's it, it 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 isn't a bad deal whether you know you know something about uh, html or you don't or you know, for example mm-hmm. um you know they'll even teach you about you know online marketing for mm-hmm. example or using uh Google Analytics. Um, so mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of nice, uh, you know, nice to have as, you know, as kind of a um, a tip this week. You know, I usually go into some kind of device or some, some kind of thing. I decided to stick with a, uh, uh, a capitalistic pig. Right. <laughs> Open my wallet. Up. Open my wallet. <laughs> <Please>. uh... <laughs> no. Oh, you. <laughs> hey, what's yours, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so so yeah, my uh, tip of the week is uh, from Lifehacker. Thanks for the tip. Uh, also, <laughs> Greenfoot provides it's Greenfoot actually. They provide a visual playground to help learn Java. So this is actually a desktop nice. install, I believe, for a uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, when learning mm. uh, programming language, language for the first time can be difficult to see how lines of code translate into visual elements, right? So what mm. what they do is they offer a free educational web app, uh, um, gives you a structured sandbox where programming students can create actors that mm. live in worlds to build simulations, games, and other visual programs. Uh, they also give you a full-on interface, a full IDE that allows you to edit code, source code, compile and debug, and best of all, everything is written in the same standard Java uh, that paid developers use instead of an educational-only language like Alice. Um, In addition Mm. to the program itself, Greenfoot, uh, they're saying, provides a variety of tutorials, community support, and teacher resources. If you've taught yourself uh, coding basics but want to produce something as a beginner other than lines of code, you should consider giving Greenfoot a test drive. So... um, yeah, it's a free educational nice. web app. Very cool. Uh, thanks, Greenfoot, for uh, offering this to all of you uh, and people interested in some computer programming. Well, look at you. Stanford last week and another help for uh, us uh, <laughs> beginners out there. Oh, yeah. How about man, that? we're loving you, man. Yeah. We're loving you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's, I'm, oh, I made him say that, everyone, so he doesn't give me a one-star rating in like TripAdvisor or something like that. So. Oh, so, or, you know, Yelp. Yelp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid That's him. right. I have my Yelp window open right now. <laughs> I guess okay. I'll make it a five star now. <laughs> so what do we got good. coming up, my man? What do we got coming up in terms hey, of uh, stuff? SF New Tech December seventh. Uh, mm-hmm. Mobile. It's a mobile night. Um, they have. It's going to be a big mobile night. In fact, I, I heard from Miles, the organizer, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, our network is uh, part of their uh, media sponsorship. Right? That's Isn't right. That right. That's right. Um, uh, they have about eight uh, startups presenting that night, and um, um, uh, and prizes I heard, the giveaways. Nice. So hey, they might be worth going to. Um, if you can't do it, uh, catch it on uh, SF New Tech slash live uh, um, on or on UStream. We'll, we'll be I'll be streaming it uh, live right. with, uh, with Btrex, and uh, you know I think uh, it, again it'll be kind of a fun evening. Uh, cool. You know I'll do some. Uh, some uh, interviews prior to that and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll just have some fun it's the last it's the last s of new tech um uh, uh pitch night uh for the year uh awesome. the, the they're going to go right into their um uh, christmas uh party every year they're going to have it like on 14th or something like that so that's the last pitch until january so okay you know so you got to catch it everyone be, be a special yep. night yep. so uh china innovators what's up happen- what's happening there Oh, oh, thank you. Uh, that mm-hmm. that's a B tracks event, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be uh, doing a panel discussion on uh, uh, innovations with uh, you know Chinese innovators. You know, there's going to be a couple of big companies um, on the panel mm-hmm. uh, speaking about you know how they've kind of uh, brought to the party from China's standpoint, you know, things to technology. So it'd be kind of neat to talk about. You get to rub elbows with the big Chinese uh, giants out there. You know, you hear about them every day now. Uh, a lot of people creating mobile mobile phones now. And yeah. so I think uh, it'll, it'll be kind of 
interesting just to learn about even uh, the Chinese market um, in general. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be it's a, it's it's put on by Asia Society and Btrax. So, cool. and I'll give you a code right now. Um, it's Btrax25. That'll give you a 25% discount off the list price, uh, awesome. which is. Uh, I believe uh, $25. So, wow. hey, you know, on, on Social Greg, you can have deal. that discount. <laughs> B-Tracks 25, people. You got the code. Yeah. Make sure there to check it out. And then go on eventbrite.com, and you'll see it there, China Innovators. So, so don't forget December. to, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, helping us out and giving, you know, leading us towards stories, uh, use the hashtag on Twitter, uh, NRDSTK, so that's uh, pound or hash. NRDSTK is the hashtag. Uh, you can also catch yes. us uh, our stuff on nerdstalker.com or go to iTunes, even better yet, and subscribe to our either audio podcast or video podcast. And please mm. also don't forget to give us a rating. That would help also. Um, the higher, the better. <laughs> and uh, go to YouTube or and check out. Come get you. <laughs> get, <laughs> check out our YouTube channel. Uh, search Nerdstalker TV, all one word, Nerdstalker TV. And uh, you can also. Mm. You want to talk about uh, Storefy and Tumblr? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I do is I, I catch all the, um, you know, we usually tweet each other all these all these things we talk about on our podcast, vidcast. So uh, what what I do is anyone retweets us or uses our hashtag, I put them into our Storefy and call it the Nerd Soccer Tech Week, um, blah, 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 backstories so, um, for the week. And so, you know, you get to get some um, uh, Twitter love from the Nerd Soccer crew, uh, crew Adolfo and Greg here. And, um, you know, you know, please catch that. And um, you'll also catch uh, um, a, a replay on my Tumblr page, uh, you know, social mentions, uh, social great mentions. So, um, you know, we're, we're everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yes. No, we're everywhere. 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 All right. Well, you can catch me at uh, NerdStalker on Twitter, uh, or you can email me, Adolfo, at uh, NerdStalker.com with any stories or whatever you want to say. How about this guy? Hey, I'm Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg. Catch me on SocialGregSF at gmail.com, or you can catch me on my website, which is a Tumblr website, which is Social Greg Mentions. So anyway, hey, have a good week. Um, have a good week. I think, uh, uh, we'll see a lot of twitterings hopefully this week, and then you know, help us out with some of the uh, articles for our next podcast. So we'll be yes. happy to uh, mention it. So all right, anyway. thanks for joining us. Yep. Take care. Be careful out there.